Hey, welcome to the video. If you haven't hit the subscription button down here, go ahead and do that now. Uh, also hit the notification bell so you'll be updated anytime we have a new video. We work really hard to bring you entertaining and useful content. So if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel, make sure to go to our Patreon page. Uh, the link is in the description below and donate 10, five, even $2 a month is a big help and it shows your support. So thanks for watching and enjoy. So uh, yeah, today we're talking to Sammy Khalid. Is that how you say it? The last name? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And concept designer, matte painter, what else? Climber? Uh, illustrator. Yeah. You had climber on your profile. Do you 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 like to climb? I do. Yeah. Cool. Um, but bouldering. Oh. Yeah. It's been so, a while since I've done it, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to get back to it. So, what's the difference between bouldering and climbing? Uh, well, bouldering is more like uh, kind of rather than climbing really high. Uh -huh. It's more shorter distances, but more complex problems. Ah. I guess if I was to compare it to running, it would be like uh, sprinting as ah. opposed to like long distance running. Okay. Is it um, less dangerous? I think so. That's, that's one of the reasons why I prefer it to, well, also if you don't need to have so much equipment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just more, yeah, you don't, you know, you don't have to deal with heights, which is something that I don't really, it's not that I'm afraid of heights, but it's just, I don't like to take risks when I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a really beautiful park here called uh, Divoka Sharka, which is like wild, wild Sharka. And they have these huge cliffs that people go and climb all the time. And But when you walk through the trail, like every time you go through, there's at least three places where there's like candles lit and, you know, a bouquet where someone fell and died. So people free climb there all the time and they die there all the time. So. Jesus. Yeah, so climbing uh, seems like fun, but bouldering seems like something like a little bit more up my alley. Yeah, yeah. I, I only really do it indoor as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just not as um, as dangerous, I would say. So um, we we don't really know each other. We're just now meeting now. So why don't we just talk a little bit about, like, why don't we just get to know each other? And then that way the audience can get to know you a little bit better, too. Um so, where are you from originally? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a complicated question. <laughs> so, I, I consider myself Irish because I grew up in Ireland, but um, I'm half Sudanese, half Filipino. Okay. Uh, I was born in Saudi Arabia. Um, I was there for like a, uh, just under a year, uh, and then I think there was the Kuwaiti War. So, I got sent to the the Philippines, the mm. Philippines, uh, to get raised by my uh, grandparents, mm. and I was there till I was five, and then I moved to, to Ireland, and yeah, grew up there. So, long the short answer is I'm, I'm Irish. <laughs> yeah. So you you identify as Irish? Yeah, that's your cultural background, basically. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah um. So, this podcast so far has been me like. I started off interviewing a lot of caricature artists because that's my profession now. Um, mm. And then I realized like there's so many other interesting art forms out there. And the one thing that was interesting for me, like growing up and going to art school and all that is I went to like a conceptual kind of art school, like very art history oriented and very like what's the, you know, postmodern kind of art, like gallery artists. And um, that's one thing that I rejected when I left art school, but I never really learned much about the industry until actually a couple of years ago, whenever I was like really deep into the caricature world. Um, and 
based on like what I've found out about you so far, like it seems like you kind of took like the industry route. Like you, you got an art job like pretty quickly, huh? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, my journey has been kind of crazy. Um, yeah, so, so I did, I, 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 I went to university and I did computer science. Uh -huh. I did that for years and then um, realized after three years that I wanted to be an, like, I've always wanted to be an artist. It's just, what it, it was kind of frowned upon or mm -hmm. not seen as a, an option uh, for, in my parents' eyes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I decided to drop out then and then pursue my passion. And yeah, I went, at the time there was no concept art. Like I wanted to be a concept artist mm -hmm. um, or an illustrator, but um, there, there was no, there was no courses around at the time that I could find that did what I wanted. And I, I guess I, I just went for the closest thing or uh, what I thought was the closest thing, or at least it had the most amount of drawing in the, in the course structure, mm -hmm. uh, which was animation. And oh. I studied animation for four years. In Ireland? Um, in Ireland, yeah, in Dublin. And I kind of realized that like, I really, like, you know, I didn't like animation. I just needed to get a degree so that my parents would like, like you know, just, just for my parents pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I did that for years, but the whole time I'm teaching myself Photoshop and um, you know learning online. Mm -hmm. uh, straight after university, you know I had I had uh, a lot of time and I was still living in my parents' house. Uh, so I just just started studying, like wrote myself up a regimen, eight hours a day, like tra treated it like a full time job, and then um, yeah, just worked on developing a portfolio, and then within seven or eight months, um, I got my foot in the door uh, in screen scene VFX hmm. as a content artist, trainee, map painter. Okay. And that's how I started. That's how I got in. So can you um, explain a little bit more about matte painting? Like what you're doing, like a lot of backgrounds and the visual development side of it? Yeah. Well, actually, I don't really do that much matte painting. Um, I, I, I kind of, I got into to a VFX house because they needed a matte painter and at that, that time like that's like the entry level right that's kind of like how you get in right yeah yeah, yeah. like they, well they had a need and you know I, I could potentially because they, they saw that you know with my portfolio then I had um, you know I could paint mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so I kind of I was kind of like just put into that role and then you know at the time you know I didn't I didn't want to be an environment concept artist or anything to do with like you know i didn't know what i wanted to be i just wanted to get in yeah and i kind of yeah and then i got in there and then started working on my first my first tv show was black sales uh, worked on broom as a map painter and um yeah i got got to, got to got to learn the ropes and then learn 3d and um yeah and then i kind of just yeah, that, you know, then you didn't even have a portfolio. You start working in some in something, you get a portfolio, and then that begets more similar work. So then, uh, yeah, then then I I got a job as a concept artist in, in London. At, at the time, my um, my my wife, or back then she was my girlfriend, she was moving to uh, London to do a course, and my goals were always to to eventually go to London because it was like the hub. Uh, this side of the world mm -hmm. for entertainment, so that was uh, that was always a, a, a goal for me, and um, I think it was uh, yeah it was uh, industry workshops, um, like, like a kind of convention. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but um, oh, that's uh, the name of the convention, uh, industry workshops. Workshops. No, I haven't yeah. heard of it. it. It was actually the first kind of convention that I went to, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I had like you know. Uh, I had a portfolio that I was pretty happy with and pretty proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of artists, and you know, there's there's recruiting going on, and that's where um, I got talking to one of the art directors from uh, painting practice, mm -hmm. and you know, got to know him then. And we oh, we so it off. that that was like somebody you took an online course with? Uh, no, no, actually, I I did before I got my um my my first job in screen scene before I got my foot in the door. I did online mentorships. Like I, I did, I did three of them actually. I did one with Anthony Jones. Oh, that's interesting. I was actually lined up to uh, interview Anthony Jones. Really? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I did my first mentorship with him, and uh, yeah, that was that was huge because like uh, um, just having someone who worked, someone of his like you know kind of like reputation and just the skill set, looking at your work, yeah, and like giving you like like being your art director essentially, mm-hmm. um, that just that just increases your like you know like he'll he'll make you see things that you've never seen before, and at the beginning it was pretty hard to, to take because like. You know, at that stage, like he's just tearing I, you down. Like, no, it's just like I, you know, like, we, like it's like the further back in my art career, the better I thought my work was. Or my work <laughs> yeah. Was. Like as you actually get better, the less your opinion your work kind of kind of yeah. is. You just realize that this is mountain you have to climb. Yeah, yeah. And, like and, you know, I was quite happy with myself because I was like. I was in a kind of closed bubble because I was just studying on my own and like I was I was putting in a lot of time like you know eight hours a day was was my average. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but so so like and it, it, it's not necessarily that it was eight good hours of practice. It was just like you know I was putting the time in. But uh, when you're when you're on your own, sometimes you can kind of go around in circles. Um, but yeah. because I was putting in the time, I had quite a high opinion of myself. Uh, yeah. At, and when, when I did that first mentorship and, you know, the first assignment came on, I remember, I remember thinking, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I was pretty happy with my first assignment. And he was just like, it's not great. Like, it was just like straight to the point, like this, uh, this isn't good. Like, you know, if, if I was your art director, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, start all over again. Yeah. And yeah, that was just, Humbling. I was like, yeah, yeah, that was tough, but like, it was huge. Um, I, like after after that point, I started kind of looking at my work a lot more in, in a different way, and yeah, kind of just being a bit more humble, I'd say. Hmm. Yeah. Um, let me ask you about the convention. Like when you first went to that convention, was it the moment with Anthony Jones, or was it the moment that you went to the convention that you realized that you weren't as good as you thought it, you were? Um, no, because at that point I had already I had done a mentorship with Anthony Jones, a mentorship with Kalen Shock, and the, 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 I, 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 like um, the one with Kalen Shock gave me like my industry ready portfolio because it was like a two month like really intensive thing. I had like a ten piece portfolio all in the same project. Okay. Um, you know, it was even though I didn't have like. Um, I didn't have actual industry experience. I had an industry-looking portfolio. Um, and I think that like, you know that's that's quite hard to do on your own uh, if you've never worked in the industry before. Just to have like a, a personal project that's cohesive. It's been art directed. Everything uh-huh. you know, you've designed every aspect of of a, of a piece. Um, you know, uh, that's quite hard to do on your own. Just uh, starting out. So I, I already had that. Like, I, and I had. You know, when you do a mentorship with someone, and you you have a bit of interaction, you can ask questions, and they give you like, a kind of like a, an insight on what it's like uh, to be to be in the industry. So, you know, when you're on your own and you're just relying on the internet to give you a, an idea of what an industry is like, you're getting a very biased view because all I was listening to was like, you know, YouTube guys uh, who are who, who are like great artists, but. They're no longer actually working in a the studio. They're actually full-time YouTubers, and that's um, a very different uh, line. That's a different career altogether. Yeah, you know, you're trying to you're trying to sell yourself. You're trying to sell the, the you know you're trying. I wouldn't say like a dream, but like you know it's 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 different. You know, but when you're in the studio, you know it's a, it's a very different mindset. You're you're not really thinking about yourself. You're thinking about the project. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a different. It's a different way of it's a different career altogether. So I think that that, that was it. That was just something that I kind of already knew because of of these mentorships. So when it came to actually talking to a recruiter, talking to an art director, you know, I wasn't. I, and also, I had already um, worked in, in in the VFX uh, studio in Dublin, so I, I had a bit of experience under under my belt. Okay. And 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 that 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 job was just more in line with what I wanted to do, rather than because. The VFX and what painting practice was doing was uh, kind of like it was a lot more concept. Like I was I was applying for a role as a concept artist, not as a matte painter. Although I did do matte painting kind of stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, like matte painting. Matte painting itself is is, is like ninety percent technical, maybe ten percent painting. Mm. 
And uh, you know, the, like although I love that, like you know, there's, there's part of me that loves that. Like I, I, I like to paint. I love painting. Yeah, yeah. The more painting I do, the happier I am. So. Huh. Um, the Kalen Shock. How do you spell that name? Oh, uh, K A L E N uh, Chalk C H O C K. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. look that up. Yeah, I had an experience like that actually. That's funny that you say that. I can definitely relate to that. Like my opinion of my artwork was like much higher like earlier in the career, and then like the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. Um, yeah. And I had that experience, like I went, I was studying caricature art on my own. I, I moved to Prague and I was like studying from this book. Um, that's an amazing book. He's an amazing teacher, but I was doing it on my own. And then like looking at Instagram and like copying and stuff. And then I went to the International Society of Caricature Artists. So you might not know that, but there's like this international convention that happens every year. And there's a few hundred artists that go and they're all professionals. Uh, and I... You know, I like before I walked in, I'm like, yeah, I might win something, you know, because they got prizes and competitions and stuff. And I was just shattered, like completely shattered. I'm like, yeah, walk out with my tail between my legs. Yeah. Um, I think those experiences are important, you know, that, that kind of humility, the, the reality. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that you mentioned, I think that's a good point for people listening, is um, that it's not really practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. And I, you know, you, you use the analogy like sometimes you're running around in circles and, and that's definitely, uh, yeah, that's definitely been my experience. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the mentorship just for a minute. Um, so you, you mentored with Anthony Jones, Kalen Chalk, and who else? Uh, Heather Abels. Okay. Oh, that, that that wasn't a one to one. I just uh, I did it with a, I think it was CG CG Masters or CG Hub. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was that was a matte painting. Okay. Uh, so you were you got out of school with a like computer science degree or IT kind of to animate. Oh no, I mean like when you when you went to school to study. Yeah, no, I dropped out. I dropped oh, out. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, and. Um, so yeah, I guess I was curious about like the work that you did after that. Cause it sounds like you kind of got in pretty quickly. I mean, you studied for, well, let me ask you that. How long did you study? You said eight months before you actually got in, like you were building your portfolio for eight months. Yeah. I had eight months of just like, cause you know, straight after university, you think you're going to get a job. Um, but that's just not the case at all. It's just. You know, it's like now, now, now. In order for you to get a job in the studio that you want, you need to be as good or better than the artists in there currently. So, you know, that's one of the things. I think I, I, I think it was Anthony Jones who, who said that to me in that mentorship. And you know, like when when I when when that kind of like hit home, I was like, you know, I'd look at my work, and even though I was happy with, you know. The stuff I was doing, I would look at, a, you know, an industry a professional, and I'd look at their work, and I'd be like, well, you know, why would I even look at my work? So yeah, that's yeah. Like, it, straight after uni, like I was waiting, you know, I was waiting for uni to be over. I wanted to get the degree to get to my parents, so that I just had nothing else, you know, stopping me from just painting and just getting better. Like, yeah. getting better was the most important thing in my life at that at that stage. Yeah, and I had friends who were like, "Oh, you know, applying for jobs in in roles that they didn't want to do because they wanted to get their get their foot in the door, or you know, applying to a VFX house as a runner, you know, just to get your foot in the door." Um, but I always thought like, no, because like, if I'm a runner or if I'm if I'm doing anima if I'm an, an animator, you know, I'll be doing eight hours a day animating or eight hours a day as a runner, you know answering emails, getting people copies, and that's eight hours not painting. So, you yeah. know, like, luckily, I, I, you know, my parents let me stay in their house for free, and I just stopped going out. I stopped, I stopped, you know, everything was just focused on get, getting good enough to get into, get my foot in the door. Um, you know, and, and 
it, it was like I think in my third year in university that you know I had I had money coming in. I already started making money off my art. Like uh, I think it was in my third year because like I, I was always painting, like always drawing, always trying to get better, always looking at tutorials. So I had I had like some level of skill, and I was going to you know my university organized like um, uh, kind of like industry talks. So we had like guests coming in, like directors and VFX supervisors, and I think there was a there was one there was one um, uh, VF, uh, uh, VFX kind of like get together, and the the, the lecturer was um, the production designer. Or no, he was a VFX supervisor on Elysium. Mm. And um, after his talk, there was a there was like a meet and greet in the, in a bar next door, and uh, yeah, I was just like chatting away to some guy at the bar. And um, I showed him my sketchbook, and he was like, "Oh, you can draw." And he was like, uh, "Would you would you want to do you want to do some uh, storyboards for me?" And he was like, "You know, it, he was like, I like uh, he, he he didn't have, like he didn't have any uh, money, or he wasn't he wasn't able to pay, but he was he said that um, like he'd he uh, you know get me back or whatever." And I I was a kid, and I, I wasn't making any money from. From uh, my art, but you know, this he was a director, so I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I did that, and it, uh, and the, the the job was actually an advertising for for PlayStation. Mm. Um, that was actually the director was uh, Kieran Foy, and uh, he introduced me then to a friend of his who is um, who's like now now my agent essentially, and um, that was a great relationship because then I started, then she, like, you know, we got introduced and then she started getting me work as a storyboard artist for commercials. Nice. And yeah. And you know, and she would, she was like dealing with all of the, the client, the client side. So she was able to get me a rate that like I could never get. Like even to this day, like some of the rates that she got me for some of the jobs, I, I still can't get. Like it, it was crazy. Huh. I was, it was crazy money for me at the time. Yeah. So just for storyboarding, that, yeah. Just for storyboarding, yeah. yeah. Like, like some of the jobs weren't weren't exactly that fun. Like uh, a lot of them were like really fast turnarounds. So it would be like, oh yeah, we need like forty storyboards over the weekend. Like forty you know, panels. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to do an all nighter for two days. Mm -hmm. Do that, but like I'd make enough money from just doing that one job to cover my my cost of living for like that month essentially yeah, yeah and you know i was getting like one or two of these every couple of months and that was just you know that was all of that money that i i made i just reinvested it into 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 the, into my, my 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 craft so that's how i paid for my for my um mentorships so i want to i want to stop you for a second because you're coming up with like you're you're saying a lot of stuff that's valuable i think to the listeners like the first thing that you mentioned is that you stopped going out and you just started like focusing totally on painting and um i think it's important to remember that like and this is a realization that i had when i went to the convention was um you know i was i was going out and drawing four to six hours a day on the street, I was drawing people. Um, but then mm -hmm. when I came home, sometimes I would do a drawing or so, but I, I wasn't like, when I came home, I wasn't like so dedicated to it because I, I kind of rationalized it by saying, oh, well, I drew today and I made some money on the street, so it's good, I don't really need much more practice, you know? But when I went to the convention, I realized that these people are drawing anywhere from eight to 12 hours a day. And they're, they're not just practicing like on their own, they're in companies or they're like taking these workshops and and so like I think the thing that I'm trying to get at is like if you really want to be a master artist like if you really want to master your craft like you you have to sacrifice some social time um, and you really have to like block out time for it and and you have to draw and practice like when you don't want to draw and practice you know like when you feel like you've done your dues for that day if it's only a few hours like you might have to put in an extra hour like just go ahead and put in that extra 10 percent each day um yeah so that, that was a really good point well like you know i because i, I have been in university you know i did a i did three years of computer science and i dropped down and did another four years 
it in animation. So I've been in university for like seven years, <laughs> and you know, I, I have I've already done my share of like going out, doing nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, films like I, I I got it out of my system essentially. You know. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Another thing that you talked about was um, like when you got the storyboarding job and you were getting paid, like you had to do, you had to crunch basically for like two days, but then you got paid enough money to pay every, all of your expenses for a month. This is uh, important for people to know too, because I think that like industry artists kind of shatter the idea of the starving artist. And maybe the starving artist idea is more like connected with people who are like painters and selling stuff in galleries. But there is like an entire industry and it's a pretty huge industry where you can use your painting skills and your drawing skills to actually make pretty good money. And some people make really good money. So that's yeah, also not true. Make, <laughs> some, some artists make really, really good money. Like, yeah. um, I think like, like, we, look over, we overlook business skills because like, we don't realize like, if you're a freelancer, you're, you're a businessman. Like, mm -hmm. uh, this is like, this is like uh, idea that like you know making money at, with, with a lot of artists like making money is is evil, or like being wealthy is evil, or you know just negative connotations towards money. Mm -hmm. And if you if you have those ideas in your head, you're never gonna make money, and you will be a starving artist. Mm -hmm. Like you know right. that's what you do. Fair enough. But like you know if you want to get rewarded for the work that you do. Like you need to, you need to value yourself, and you need, you do need to value money because, yeah, in the, in the world that we live in, you use money to, to get by. Yeah. So if you have, if you have a very low value of money, why would you accumulate it? Why would you get it? Um, yeah, exactly. It is about yeah. the mindset. It's about your script. You know, it's like what you're telling yourself that that message that's going around and around in your head. And just to be clear, a lot of people get it mixed up. Like there's the parable that says, uh, you know, money is the root of all evil. That's not actually what it says. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Those are two totally different things. <laughs> so I think yeah. like what that means basically is, you know, um, we're not really doing it for the money. We're doing it for the love of the craft. And if you really put the love into the craft and you put the time and the energy into the craft, then the money will follow as long as you don't block yourself by telling yourself over and over, like, wealth is not good or money is bad or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Another thing that you said is um, you said that you reinvested. You know, you kept reinvesting that extra money back into your business. So were you and your business being yourself and your own skills? So were you reinvesting in workshops or were you investing in new Wacom tablets or what? Uh, well, no, I was, I was invest, reinvesting in my skills. Um, uh, I, I actually had, I used the same Intuos, Intuos 3 mm -hmm. for over 11 years. It only, it only died, died on me about a year ago. Like okay. I had it still like since I was 16, I got it. Was that the one where you hook up and you use the monitor as the screen, or were you drawing right on the screen? Just a regular tablet. Oh, and it, it like had a, its own screen. Okay. It wasn't a screen one. No, like um, I didn't get, I, I didn't use a Cintiq until I got into um, until I got the painting practice actually. Oh. And yeah. So so yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't invest too much on on the tech. You know, it's was, it was more just on the skills. Mm -hmm. um, so mentorships, going to industry workshop, that convention, um, yeah, um, yeah, like I, I got the returns. Like you can't, I can't even quantify the, the kind of like the value I got back from from something like a, a mentorship. Um, yeah, it's just it's better than any sort of schooling, <laughs> to be honest. Definitely, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the schooling system, the way it's set up now, in most cases, is based on a really old, antiquated system. I feel that yeah. like you can get, I feel like you can get a really proper education online with on, even online mentorships and, like you said, going to conventions and stuff like that. Because you get to pick and choose the masters that you're working with. I mean, that's that's huge. 
Yeah. So what, like, uh, just if you don't mind me asking, like what was about the amount that you were paying for these, these mentorships, about a thousand bucks or more? No, it's like 400, $400 for a month. Oh, that's good. So it, it was, was a month. Like time ago. Like, I, I would say it's gone up because things are getting more expensive. But uh, and then for the for the for the eight week one, it was a thousand. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Did but, you? Yeah. You got you got you get a lot of value for that. Like it's it's you know over a month of someone's time and then their expertise and then even just a one on one time. Like you, you could schedule in like a, a personal just like a. Like a conversation time, which is like, and you can ask whatever questions you, you, you might have. Nice. Like that's, yeah. So, um, because like I am subscribed to Schoolism, so I do the some like classes, the month to month one. Like you, you know about Schoolism? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've, do, I've recently done the Tonko House one, which is huge. Um, actually, I did, I did that a couple of months ago. That's the uh, iPad. I, I, the appropriate one? No, no, no. Uh, the Dice Tatsumi and Robert Robert Kondo, Kondo. Um, Color and Light. Ah, okay. That one and uh, Craig Mullins. Nice. One as well. So, did you do the one on one with them? No, no. Um, okay. If I had the time, like you know, but back then when I before I got it, before I got into the industry, I had all the time in the world. But now I'm like working full time, so mm -hmm. I can I could only do the just like I had to do it on my own kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get the value out of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, like you wanna, you wanna have like, you know, a whole month cleared out, so that you can really, because you, you wanna be able to do, you know, say if, if you're preparing a portfolio, you wanna, you wanna get as many pieces in front of them for them to give their critiques on, mm -hmm. for you to get the value. Like, there was, while I was doing my mentorships, there was professionals doing them at the same time, mm -hmm. and they're working like eight hours a day, so. You know, they might get one assignment in, whereas I was going to get three or four, mm -hmm. uh, just because I had the time to, to do that. So, you know, even though they get value out of it, I feel I got more value because I just had more for them to critique, and they're spending more time on me because I have more work to show them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just don't think I would have um, really got the value out of a one on one. Yeah, this uh, this talk has inspired me to to like reconsider the month to month thing that I'm doing and actually take a mentorship. Um, because after the COVID thing, like the caricature industry is like, it'll probably come back, but it's not, it was a heyday before, you know, so now it's like, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm starting, I'm taking uh, environmental design with Nathan Fox and mm. just like trying to get some basic portfolio stuff. Cause it's crazy out. I mean, there's there's a lot of jobs available. Like, I had no idea that there was like so many opportunities to actually work, like to use my art in a bigger industry like that. So, I mean, I'm getting like ten emails a day, like, oh, this job matches your profile, and this job matches your profile, and I'm like, that's cool, but I can't show them anything but like funny faces that I've drawn, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I I've gotten some good feedback from some like some people that I would consider masters, but they basically told me after looking at my portfolio, like you got the skills, but like it's all put into this caricature thing and nobody's going to be able to use these caricatures. So, um, so, uh, we don't have much time left, but, um, maybe we can talk just for a minute about like your work now. Like you, you've done some work for black mirror and some other kind of like pretty uber famous programs. I have. Yes. And so, what are you doing exactly with that? Like, what's the workflow like? Oh, so concept art wise, like, I I would say I'm more known for my environments. Um, I have like a environments and like keyframe art. Uh, I've got some character stuff. Um, I can't I can't show any of it though, because uh, yeah, a lot of stuff is still in development. So maybe mm -hmm. in the next two years, I can show some of that stuff. But um. Yeah, in general, you know, working for film as a concept art is more like uh, you're. First of all, you're not really you're not really an artist. You're a designer. Um, you're not creating works of art. You're you're trying to solve a problem. So, you know, it's very rare that you get to be this polished, beautiful looking piece. It's usually like, you know, like on a typical day, 
I might have a set to work on and it's just like, well, you know, if it's just, just at the start, spend half a day doing research, kind of mm -hmm. have like a clear plan that you can show your art director. And then second half of the day, maybe get three to six uh, black and white or whatever you can, three, three to six concepts out um, that kind of like, you know, is, is answering some of the questions, you know, you're, you're not, you're not really like trying to make a, a beautiful like, image, like to some degree you are, like you're, you are, you know, you have an artistic sensibility, so you want to make it presentable, but you're trying to answer questions like how big is this room? There's, an, there's a prop in the room, where does that prop go? Mm. You know, what's the, what's the light in the room? Um, you know, some, some, some like rules of composition that illustrators would be uh, using all the time might not work because it's not about that's not too much about the composition. It's more about you know our, our, what's what's this room look like. And like you're doing that in two D or three D. Uh, both. You know, if it's quicker for you to do a sketch, go for it. Like if if you if you can do it in three D or if if three D is is the tool for that moment, go for it. But with three D, there's the danger. It depends on who you're working with as well because like some people don't react positively to three D. Like once they see 3D, it looks too final, and then that scares them, especially early on in the project. Okay. So sometimes pencil sketches at the, at the beginning, you know, showing space, showing some elements of design, um, yeah. So that's what concept art is. It's fast. It's iterative. You have to do a lot of designs. Um, you know, it's not it's not always like really, you know, beautiful hero props. Sometimes you have to do doorknobs or skirting boards or you know, uh, helmets. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on the project. Like one of the, some of the good stuff about it is, uh, especially when I, when I was working on painting practices, you know, we, we were working on loads of different projects and a lot of them can be very different. So sometimes it's all about Victorian architecture and the next one could be an animation thing. And it's like, you know, beautiful, lush English countryside. Um, yeah. And, and I guess for me, that that's what I enjoy. I, I, I get very, I get kind of bored, like, you know, if I have to work on a six year long game, mm -hmm. I think I might get a bit too, I might get fed up, especially if it has a very specific style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it keeps you on your toes. You, you need to kind of like be very good at research and yeah, you like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like, um, if, if you're that way inclined, if you're kind of quite, quite technical, you like to understand things, you like to break things apart and see how it works. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, it's, these things are going to have to be built by a crew. So the, you have to have an under, underlying knowledge of construction, architecture, uh, have some basic understanding of the prop that you're going to build. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. how, how does it look like in the hand? How does it fit? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very, very practical. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So the, the so yeah. I definitely am, am like that. I'm, I definitely like, and, and I... I'm the same way. I don't think that I could stay on a project for you know years. I, I like to be challenged all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So concept art is basically that's pretty umbrella, right? I mean, you're doing like visual development stuff. You're doing like you said, like doorknobs and environments, but also characters and props. Yeah. Cool. I think that in a, in a, it's a it's a smaller boutique studio, so you get to do a lot of you get to try a lot of different things. Like in a, in bigger post houses. You know, you're, you're more specialized. Blind. Yeah, so you know, yeah. you could just be like a vehicle artist, or like a, you just you just do creatures, and specifically within creatures, you do fur. You know, like it can get very uh, specialized. Huh. So, yeah. Huh. It that's interesting. That's that's a good piece of knowledge to know that if you go to a bigger studio, you're going to be more specialized. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we're out of time, but is there right? You have to go now, right? And now I've got, I've got another 50, 10, 15 minutes. Well, let's uh, talk about your, like, is there something that you want to plug? Is there, like, you want to talk about your Instagram or something? Um, well, I guess, like, yeah, like, my Instagram is at Chig. Um, I've, I've actually been, with the whole, but in the last, since November, I would say, I've, I've really started to, well, I've started reading, like this last year, I've been focusing a lot more on, on the business side of things, especially after going freelance. And I've, I've kind of like, it's dawned on me the importance of marketing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since November, I would say I've, 
I've been really just putting a bit of emphasis on, on marketing. And, when, you, um, when you say marketing, you mean marketing your own skills to get yeah different clients, Marketing's, like using using social media. Um, you know, and in the same way as we were talking about earlier with with the kind of my a- a- attitude to money, my attitude to social media for like you know the past eight years was was quite a, a negative one when I when I really kind of asked myself about it. It, it was uh, it was that you know inst- or Instagram and social media is is, is a kind of is a is a tool for just kind of like self gratification and vanity and you know people who were really successful at it were they were successful because of the fact they were so vain mm. and that's why I had such I never put any emphasis on it and I, I never had a, any sort of any sort of following mm-hmm. and I read um, uh, Crush It Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk uh huh yeah yeah and that, that kind of blew my mind because it, really, it really got me to address that that sort of that mindset I had on it and um, I changed my mindset and I I, I I looked at social media in a more positive way in the sense that it gives people an opportunity to look at your work, mm-hmm. you know, and that, and that in itself is something to be very grateful for. And it's like, you know, um, so with this new change in mindset, I started becoming a better, a better version of myself online, you know, because before that I never liked anyone's work and I never really followed many people. And then I was like, why would anyone follow you? If you don't follow anyone else, yeah. why would anyone comment on your work if you don't comment on people's work? And yeah. I was just, you know, this, the, the contradiction of that was, was so crazy. I was like, right, from now on, I'll make a concerted effort to, every day, I would find, I would like a hundred pieces of artwork. Okay. And then comment on ten artists whose work I enjoyed and why I enjoyed their artwork. And how long ago was that? This is the, since November. Okay. Have you so seen the jump? Day, Sorry. Have you seen a jump? Oh yeah, I went from six hundred to now I'm over seven thousand in the space. Yeah, of, uh, yeah. A couple of months. Yeah. Granted, I'm also I'm also uh, uh, painting every day, oh. uh, which which helps to to grow that. But um, yeah, it's 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 like night and day in terms of just a switch in mindset. And you know, like I started doing things. I started being just nicer, uh, being more positive person. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when you when you when you kind of like value. People coming, stopping by, looking at your work, and then making a comment. When someone like comments on your work and says, "Wow, this is great," like really valuing that because they've they've take, t- taken time out of their day. In the same way, I take time out of my day and you know say something nice about someone's work if if I like it. Yeah, like that 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 is a, a nice gesture. And yeah, it's been it's been this kind of like um, compounding effect where now like uh, where it took me like eight years to get six hundred followers. It's taken me like well, a couple of months or eight months to to get a hundred percent increase yeah. in my in my, yeah. my bottle. Yeah, that is really valuable when people do that because when you look at the statistics, I mean people are super apathetic. Like I can put a post up and get like two thousand people to see it and then I look over at the engagement, it's like fifteen people engaged. <laughs> I'm like, really out of two thousand? Like come on, just double tap, that's all you gotta do. Just move your thumb like this. <laughs> Yeah. So, 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 some of it is just like the battling with the algorithm. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't like. It. I don't know how much that is. So, like, I always take it with a pinch of salt when you when you start kind of like trying to overanalyze why something doesn't do well or not. It's just like you just don't know how much of it is algorithm. So, yeah. It, they, like they do. They are like the algorithms are like. Oh, they've always been geared toward like engagement. So, I mean, it's like you said, if, if you're engaging and you're like creating a community and talking to like certain people, then that, that, that's what they're boosting usually. So that's what, yeah. that's the way I understand it anyway. There's definitely like tricks and stuff. Like I participate in some of these contests. I have one today actually, and this will be the last one that I do for a while. But, um, the problem with those is like, People who are like following you and stuff for like a contest are usually people who are like really young. Like <laughs> if, if you want to be if you want to be an art teacher, like if you want to do art tutorials or, or something like those contests are good because then you have like really young amateur or hobbyist artists that want to try to win art supplies. But um, 
it's not like a real genuine follower. Like my my audience was like sixty five percent men before I did the contest, and now it's like seventy eight percent like young women. Like they're and I wouldn't even call them women; they're girls. You know, they're like a lot of them are like teenagers. I'm like, oh man, now I gotta like change my audience. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I realized very quickly that you know Instagram just loves portraits of women, like yeah. beautiful girls. Yeah. And you know, for a while there, I was like, oh, I could just if I just do this, I'll get like, because I, I think I did a few <laughs> like portraits of girls in a row, and like just the the following just started skyrocketing, and then I was just like, what? Well, you know, I don't want to get all these because, like, at that point, almost half of my subscribers were there for those girls, and it's just like, well, it's, you know, I don't really enjoy doing girls this much. Like, I like I like doing the odd portrait of a girl, but I, I can't do this the whole time. Yeah. So I curb that back, and yeah, you know, <laughs> that's so funny, I, man. I had to ask myself at that point: like, is my goal to get like? loads of subscribers or is it get to get specific subscribers or followers yeah and there was a point where you know i had like in the space of like in one month i had like three of like my favorite artists uh, uh follow me and like comment on my work and like i was just so like elated i was just like i've, I've made it you know yeah like, yeah I think it was uh, Matthias Mestre, who, or, sorry, I can't, I, I think I might be butchering his second name, but he, he did Framed Ink. Okay. Um, you know, well, like, Framed Ink is... No, is, I like, don't know, what is that? Compos- but uh, he commented on, on, like, a couple of my images, and I'm just like, Jesus. That's like, cool. Like, I'm done, you know, like, I, I've won. <laughs> I've yeah. won. I've beat Instagram. That's or you it. just got started. You're just getting started. You finally got your start. But, uh... Yeah, it was funny because I was on Facebook the other day and I have a friend who's like really attractive young lady and she like wrote on there complaining that she put her new profile picture up and she got like, you know, 20,000 comments or whatever just for her like showing her shoulder, you know, and like looking back like this. And I'm like, I just wrote back, I'm like, you definitely need to stop complaining because <laughs> I work for like five hours on a painting and I get like 15 likes, you know. And if I were to just draw like a half naked girl, I I would probably get fifty thousand likes. You know, yeah. it's so funny how how like easy it is to hack the human brain with sex. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's just like on day on days I feel kind of like down about things and just like will I just do that? Like just go down the the kind of like anime like weirdness that like I know will just get get me like millions of eyeballs uh, <laughs> but luckily it's luckily, a trap don't happen. fall into the trap <laughs> uh, well man thanks for uh, thanks for your time and uh, it was really cool meeting you and talking to you and um, yeah, yeah man. let's stay great. in touch I, I'll probably have more questions for you because I'm interested in getting into concept art so yeah man drop me a line okay so Sammy Khalid, everybody.